And I just always knew that if I just kept my focus and, and kept my faith in God, that, that anything was possible. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Shelton, man, and we got something really dope for y'all today, man. I've got one of my friends. Actually, he's my coach, Brandon Burns. BB, right? It's last name Burn. I'm gonna mess him up. <laughs> no, I'm um, man, I'm super excited about this, man, because like I've known Brandon now for about maybe what a year and some change or something yeah, like that. It's fair. Um, I met Brandon at um in Atlanta. Uh, he spoke at the 120 conference with uh Mr. Eric Thomas, super incredible um guy, um, speaker. A lot of you probably know who he is, number one motivational speaker in the world. Um, I got to see Brandon speak while we were there. And um, I just kind of connected with him um, on some different things on to help me personally. And he was actually in the area um, with, with, with the Missouri Gymnastics team. And uh, we're still Razorback fans. We're we going to give him a pass <laughs> right now. But um, just, just wanted to meet up with him, man. And all of us get together, just chop it up. And um, yeah, that's that's why we here, just, just to kind of chop up some stuff, man. So what's up, B? Man, <laughs> man, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this because We've worked together a lot, but yeah. we've never produced anything yeah. uh, together, yeah. right? Like I've helped you produce some of your own content, oh, yeah. some of your own branding stuff from mm -hmm. a business perspective, done a lot of work together. But this is the first time we've gotten to really sit down, dive into a little bit of both of our stories and really create something together. So man, I'm, I'm pumped to be here. Yeah. So as, you, as you're talking about some of the stuff you've helped me with, do, do me a favor real quick, just like in a 10, 15 second window, if you can, let them know what you do, man, and like how they can reach you and stuff like that, because that way, you know, some of these cats that follow me, they may be like, yo, Mike's my guy, but look, if that's Mike's guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, shoot, maybe I need to holler at him, you know? My association, I right. can be your guy too. Right, right, that's what I'm saying. So like, kind of yeah. give like a little bit of like information on what you do and, and what you got going, man, because they kind of know what I got going. 100%, so I'm a keynote speaker and a high performance life and business strategist. So I, for the most part, I'm specializing in taking personal brands, helping them start and scale their businesses, and uh, specifically helping them build businesses with enterprise value. So something that Mike and I talk a lot about is, you know, we're building this personal brand, we're getting you out there as a speaker, as a coach, but how do we make that into a business, right? right? That is, is a sellable business, enterprise value, something that when you don't want to be on stage anymore, mm. you don't want to coach anybody, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Nah. But if and when it does, right, yeah. you still have a tangible asset that you can build. Because that's the biggest mistake that I see so many of these guys doing is it's the social media age and I'm getting $5,000 for a sponsored post or somebody came and gave me 10 grand to do a keynote presentation, which is phenomenal. But if you don't have a true business behind that and you don't learn the fundamentals of business development, it's not going to outlast you yeah. and you're not gonna have a chance of generational wealth. So that's a lot of what I specialize in. In addition to speaking myself, being a coach myself, uh, it's, it's a little bit all over the board, man, but it's, it's fun work. Well, no, I like the fact that you got more than one um, stream. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, we, we talk a lot of times and I teach a lot of people here locally, especially barbers and people that are in the barber industry about not just having a stream and your main stream being barbering because, you know, let's just face it, a few years ago when, when COVID hit, we had to shut barber shops down and a lot of barbers like actually struggled, you know yeah. what I mean? Because they, they only had that one stream, whereas, you know, I was bummed, but at the end of the day, me and my wife had other things going, so we was able to kind of maintain through that, even though it was, a, you know, it was a dark period of time, but I like how you've got several things going. Um, I, one of the things that, that Brandon is actually really helping me out, y'all, right now is that um, taking my speaking things to the next level, but also like how to monetize that off the stage too, though. And so that's the thing I really like enjoyed. And, and, and we, to be honest with you guys, we're still working through, we don't have it all done to where we can present it and, and start having people sign up. But it's like, you, you, your mind, the thing I like about you a lot is that your mindset is crazy. Like, like he has this saying, y'all, this at the school have heard me say this, like every day means every day. Yeah. Like, and, and that's a motto that Brandon lives by. Like every day means every day. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Cause I, I love that, man. I love that. Man, where it actually came from was, I do a lot of commentating work with the Big Ten Network. Mm -hmm. um, branched into ESPN now, too. Got my first gig on That's March fire, 3rd for bro. ESPN. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, go. I'm, I'm moving go. up in the world. Let's go. With some sports broadcasting. I was a gymnast throughout college. I went to the University of Michigan. I uh, did gymnastics there for five years. Coached two-time Big Ten Championship, coached with them as well. So I'm, I'm heavily rooted in Resume athletics. Six, bro. Man. <laughs> man, it didn't feel like it when I was going through it. We'll get to that in a minute with yeah. the story, but it didn't feel like it was gonna be this amazing resume when I was struggling through that, but man, it's such a deeply rooted background in athletics. Um, but I was doing some commentating work with BTN and I was out there for one of the shows and somebody asked me, how often do you work out? 
because you know it was summertime, so I had the short sleeve shirt on, guns were out, and everything. Yeah. So how often do you work out? I said every day. Yeah. And she was just astonished. Mm-hmm. She was like, "But like every day?" Mm-hmm. I said, "Every day means every day." <laughs> I work out every day. How that else can Monday, I say this? <laughs> that means Tuesday, yeah. that means Saturday, Sunday, yeah. and everything in between. That's yeah. what it means, yeah. right? And it, it's funny to me that, especially in our space, in entrepreneurship, people say, man, I work every day. Yeah. Do you open your email every day or do you work every day? Mm. I work out every day. Do you go to the gym every day or do you work out mm. every day? Yeah. Because what I've realized, Mike, is that who you are is not set in stone because of what you've done. Right. And I had to learn that. Yeah. Right. Because I thought, okay, I was this D1 athlete. Mm-hmm. I was in the best shape of my life doing death defying flips as a gymnast. Yeah. I made a lot of money as an entrepreneur. So I've done these different things and I've had pockets of success, but I started to identify with that success rather than identifying with who I am in that very moment, mm. that day. Yeah. And so I realized that that commitment to who I am, my standards of excellence, my values, I got to reaffirm that every day. Yeah. If I worked hard in the gym yesterday and I'm slacking today, Every day didn't mean every day. I'm not who I was then today. Boy, and so problem. I'm not. <laughs> you, get you get what I'm saying. Yeah, man, listen, I'm trying to tell y'all, listen, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. Every day don't mean every day with me when it comes to my, my working out, as y'all can say. <laughs> I'm about two days a week. I gotta get I gotta get better. I gotta get better. All right. I'm sitting next to the man. So I gotta I got I got to, I gotta step it up a little bit. Man, do this for me. Um Tell us a little bit about who you are, like where you came from, you know what I mean? And stuff like that, a little bit about your background, bro. I think I think that's pretty dope too. I know it, but I, I want the people to know it though. Man, so it's it's been a journey. Yeah. Um, everything that you're hearing about now didn't start like that. I was mm. born in Huntsville, Alabama, small town, about 45 minutes south. Hold on a minute, Alabama or, or, or Auburn? Cause listen, I've been to Alabama, bro, and it's split 50-50. It is. Okay, let me say this. Okay. I was raised an Auburn fan. Okay. My heart is still, as an Auburn fan. Okay. But they don't win nothing. They don't. <laughs> Ever since Cam knew. Ever since Cam, he left. <laughs> Cam, that was that was the year, that was like the year of every Auburn's fan yeah, dream. Yeah. Was when Cam was playing. But so no, I you know, when Alabama's in the championship game, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna you root for them. them. Okay. But now I root for Michigan. I guess I guess either of them. That's fair, that's you know, fair. That's fair. Y'all ain't never gonna beat them though. I, I get SEC <laughs> out here. You and SEC country right now, but but we'll go ahead, proceed, proceed, proceed. Wait, my give Harbaugh a couple more years. We didn't think he was gonna get Big Ten championships either. Man, that and dude's then, trying to uh, trying to go to the NFL after every year, man. Come on, I mean, <laughs> nah. <laughs> they try to steal him away, yeah. man. But no, born and raised Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. Um, you know, grew up without having a whole lot. I never knew I didn't have a whole lot. Mm. I thought you know, a nine hundred square foot house was normal. Come on. Until I found out that it wasn't. <laughs> um, but <laughs> other than that, man, relatively normal childhood. Started the sport of gymnastics when I was 10 years old. Mm. Completely changed the trajectory of my life. Matter of fact, the only reason I went to the University of Michigan was because of the gymnastics team. Dang. Because there are no men's gymnastics teams in the SEC. Really? None. The closest man. one to Alabama is actually Ohio State. I would have never known that. Yeah, it's a dying sport. Dang. Um, so I ended up going to Michigan for that. It was a walk on to the team. Um, and from there, it was just five years worth of adversity. When I was in college, like I said at the, in the intro, cut from the team four times in five years. Dad was diagnosed with cancer uh, during that time period. Mom diagnosed with incurable autoimmune disease during that time period. Uh, nasty, nasty breakup during that time period. Just a lot of personal yeah. challenges and, and trial and tribulation that was during those college years for me. Yeah. And so it was just this constant process of pushing through that. And at times it was like, why? why? Mm. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. even see what's on the other side of it. And I needed a lot of motivation. Yeah. Right. And because I needed motivation, I started searching motivational speakers on YouTube. Yeah. Come across this guy named Eric Thomas. Yeah. Which we well, know, we both know and love these days. Go. Come go. across his stuff on YouTube and I'm following him because I identified a lot with his story, yeah. right? He actually spent a lot of time in Huntsville, Alabama. That's his right. biological father wasn't in his life similar right. to myself. So a lot of commonalities in that regard. So I started listening to his content and yeah. I'm binge watching his stuff every single yeah. day, especially as a struggling athlete, mm. getting cut from the team four times in five years. And so I watch his content and one day I'm scrolling and my gymnastics career had pretty much just ended. I just found out within the last couple of weeks I needed wrist surgery Mm -hmm. to reconstruct uh, what's called your TFCC, Mm -hmm. a small ligament in your wrist. So I pretty much knew my gymnastics career was over. In that same two or three week span is also when I found out about the health issues with my parents. And so it was just the world crumbled in in such a condensed period of time. Mm -hmm. And right at that very moment, I'm scrolling on Instagram. I remember I'm 20, 
about 20 years old yeah. at this time. And I'm working throughout college as well, putting myself through college while doing sports, while actually trying to succeed academically, all this other personal stuff going on in my life. I see an ad pop up one-on-one -on -one with ET mm. for $250. What? Right? Man, he's still charging two fifty. No. I didn't want one on one right now. Et, Man. you see this? Where you at, Et? I got you. I do five hundred. I'll, I'll double up. Hook, hook a player up. I'm funny. ready. I'm ready. He's never done it. It was the only time. Damn. The only time in his entire God, thirty you, year career. I know you hear me. God, let him do it one more time for me. Stop, stop messing with you, God. Man. <laughs> So, but remember now, I'm 20 years old, put myself through college. Yeah. So I'm like, $200 or 250, that's a lot of money to me. Yeah, no, right? for sure, bro. Now here's what's funny, and I don't know if we caught this on the B-roll here, but before we actually started having this conversation, we were talking about my first car. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I wanted at that point in my life was a six stereo system. Now my car was oh, beat what? up. A stereo system. Oh, I want okay, to put a okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to put a subwoofer in the trunk. Because yeah, you was car, twenty. You was twenty. That's what twenty-year-old people saying. wanted. The base. Don't want no gas right. money. Want some speakers. That's all I wanted. <laughs> because the car was a piece of junk. Yeah. But I wanted to put a twelve-inch sub in the back. <laughs> That's all I wanted, man. I remember those. Now, That's why I'm laughing. That's why I'm laughing. Watch this. Yeah. I had it fitted. I didn't buy it yet, but I had it fitted. Uh -huh. Guess how much it was going to cost me? Two fifty. Two fifty. Woo. And so now I'm sitting there making this decision. Do I want to go have a one on one consultation with a guy I've never met? I don't know if he's the same off of YouTube as yeah. he is on on the Internet. Yeah. Or do I want to go buy with this thing that I've been one? Yeah. 250 is about half the money I got in my well, bank It's like account. a million dollars when you're 20 years old in All college, bro. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. I don't know what tugged on me to say this is worth doing, but I took the chance. Cash, I think it was uh, uh, PayPal back at that time. It wasn't even like an invoice. <laughs> well, just PayPal oh, 250. Well, you, you're speaking your age right now, you said PayPal. <laughs> so instead of the 250, we get on a phone call at like six o'clock in the morning, a week, oh, yeah. a week later. And he says, man, you're at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I'm over here at uh, MSU in East Lansing. It's only an hour, 15 minutes away. Why don't you come meet me for breakfast? A few days from now, mm. six o'clock in the morning. Man, ET a real one, man. I like that. I promise. That's the, he a dude but here's a real the thing, one. Though. He a real one. Here's the thing about him. It was a test. Yeah. Because six o'clock in the morning, I'm an hour and a half away. So I got to get, get up. up oh, okay. Four a.m. Because for y'all right around, look, where y'all at? I'm gonna tell y'all right now. ET, shout out to ET. He known for being up at three a.m. So ET, uh, the question is, are you up? Keep going. I just want to get him a little. I just want to get him a little bit of background as to why, <laughs> you know, why he doing this. That's right. That's right. I mean, and at this time, I got to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to go yeah. meet him. I've never waken up at four o'clock in the morning on purpose <laughs> yeah. in my life. Why would yeah. I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like a detrimental decision to my health and happiness. But for <laughs> yeah. whatever reason, at that time, it was worth it for me. So I drive out there. I meet him. That one conversation changed my life. Man. Mm. Completely yeah. changed my yeah. life. My That's whole awesome, man. spiritual outlook, everything. Yeah. It just changed right then and there. And ever yeah. from that from that moment on, I just started following him to every event that I could go to, volunteer at every event that I could. Ended up going to, to see the success series at Michigan State, free event that mm. he put on at MSU every Monday. Went out there, drove. This is what my, my Monday looked like for two years straight. This was my senior year and my fifth year, my super senior year at Michigan. I would get up around six o'clock in the morning, go do morning lift with the gymnastics team yeah. at Michigan. Class from about eight to two o'clock in the afternoon. I would train with the varsity guys for a little bit and then coach, because at this time I was also the volunteer assistant coach for Michigan men's gymnastics. Do that from two to five, jump in the car, drive to Michigan State, hear ET do his keynote, mm. get back in the car, drive back to Ann Arbor, coach personal training sessions at night to pay for the gas that I just used to get out to MSU. Boy. Two years straight. Man. Didn't miss, but two, both of which were for family stuff I couldn't avoid. Yeah. The last success series that I went to was a couple of months before I graduated. So I put together this folder, right? Cover letter, resume, my disc assessment was in there. We know ET oh, loves yeah. that. Yeah, I did that. Uh, put 55 pages worth of writing samples. I didn't speak back then. I was super introverted, unconfident, yeah, 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 stuttered yeah, yeah. my words, hated talking in front of people, mm. couldn't do it. So I didn't speak, but I wrote. Mm. I knew I had similar philosophies, similar mindset, so I would write a lot. And I had 60 pages worth of writing samples in this little binder. That, that you gave gonna, ET? I was gonna give it to him. Oh, okay. At the very end of the presentation, he goes, I keep hearing about this coronavirus stuff. I can't stick around, shake hands, and sign autographs, take oh, pictures like I okay. usually do. And he walks out the back door of the arena. Oh. And I'm sitting here thinking. So you like, no, dog, you ain't getting up out of here that easy. I, something in me. Yeah. Something in me said I can't miss this opportunity. No, no, no. But no. here's the thing: none of us thought COVID was a real thing. 
Because uh, this true. is the first week of March. This is before it even broke in. Yeah. Like before it just shocked the world and shut the world down. People had heard about it, but the world hadn't shut down. Right, 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 right. Right? And so I don't know what called upon me to say I can't let this opportunity slip. But he walked out the back door of the arena. I'm sitting here thinking, my man's famous. Yeah. If I run after him, somebody's bound to tax. I don't know who the security guard is, but he in the room well, somewhere. I'm going to think he was security. What? I, I mean, you, I mean, you kind of small now. Yeah. I mean, I'm just they be like, no well, man, okay. he good. He was team. He well, here's, team. Here's what you can't see on camera. <laughs> yeah. I got big muscles, but I'm five nine on a good day. <laughs> if I wear the right kind of shoes, I might be able to convince you I'm five ten. Let's go. Let's Maybe, go. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. I left my laptop, my backpack, everything mm -hmm. that I had sitting right there at that desk. Went out the other door of that mm -hmm. same arena, sprinted up two flights of uh, stairs, beat him to his car. Yeah. I knew where he parked his car every week. Yeah. I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so so what I what I what I hear, man, as as I'm hearing you say this stuff, bro, which is like super dope. And this is the first time I've heard this story, like yeah. in this detail, is that, bro, you had a date with destiny. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, and like you 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 wasn't gonna let a, 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 a long round trip stop you. You wasn't gonna let the two hundred and fifty dollars stop you. Um, because you knew in your heart that this right here can set me up. Like being underneath this guru, being underneath this person, like I have to get with this guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and what I even like what you said too was like, yo, like I even left my laptop and everything and rolled out. Like, bro, yeah. you was even willing to like, you you was willing to lose that. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. bro, let's be honest. I've been, I, I, I've been in college. I, I live in the you college dorm. People yeah. steal all the time. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is that you were so like, like pinpoint, like, like tunnel vision in like, yo, I, I, there's just something I've got to get to this guy, bro, that you was willing to sacrifice, like whatever you had to do to get to him. Yeah. And I wonder, bro, as, as, as I was wondering, as you was talking about that, like how many of us, we say we want certain things. Mm -hmm. We say we want to go to certain levels, right? But what are we willing to give up? Mm -hmm. What are we willing to sacrifice to get there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because as a college student, like you said, two hundred fifty dollars is a lot of money. Like we exactly. laugh at two fifty now. We we blow two fifty now. You know what I'm saying? Just on dumb stuff. But like, man, like I just think that's crazy because listen, at the end of the day, bro, like you planted the seed. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and God and God allowed something beautiful to grow in it. And now, so I don't want to ruin the story. So so, <laughs> what are you doing now? Like, did, so what what happened with that? As you met with E, you 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 ran out there, you gave him the paperwork, yeah. like. Like so, what what what's like? How does that how did that connect you with him now? Like, what's going on with that? Like, I know, but I'm just saying, like, I want the people to know. Like, yeah, no question, no question. So it was funny because I had this whole script in my mind memorized of exactly how I was going to pitch it to him. Yeah. This is why I deserve an opportunity. This yeah. is what I'm going to be able to do for you. This is how I can help you. Whole thing went out the window. Yeah. I was so scared, man. And you gotta understand the atmosphere too. It's like 40 degrees, raining because mm -hmm. it's March in Michigan. That's yeah. what it does out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just handed him this this giant folder et don't read like now, that. now now what did he say once you handed it to him i don't i don't even remember even his expression honest. like you <laughs> like, just imagine just like, like this crazy guy that yeah. beat me to my car because he's used to like fans running up on him right, like that that's but true. he's not used to somebody literally beating him to his right, car and right. saying hey i got this for you yeah that's right fair. I'm just glad I did it when I was 20 and not when I was 40. Because if I had done it when I was 40, I would have been arrested. What you trying to say, man? I'm 40. So you trying? I'm, I'm literally. You're 40. not. You, you, are you trying to tell me? Look, look, e, I'm, not, I'm not running up on you. Police, don't worry about it. Like, no, I'm just. No, yeah, well, see, you don't chase people down. No, nah, nah, I'm too slow anyway. Yeah, I'm not running. running. If I got to run, I ain't going. Like, I'm just telling you right now. It's not worth it. No, me too, <laughs> man. But uh, no, I gave him that that paperwork, and um, he said, well, "We'll figure out an internship for you." So I ended up committing to an unpaid internship for uh, a few say, months. Say that one more time. Unpaid internship. Unpaid. unpaid. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make unpaid. sure people understood that that it was unpaid. That's right. Because like, I'm saying, because bro, we live in a society now. It's like, what's in it for me? Yeah. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's willing to like sacrifice anything no more, bro. Like they want everything handed to them. You know what I'm saying? And and bro, like. If no matter where you're trying to go in life, no matter what you're trying to accomplish, like you're gonna have to give up something. You're gonna have to like sow something. You you just not gonna reap all the time. You gotta sow something. And so even if that means doing free stuff to even prove your word, because I'm sure there was a show and prove when you're dealing with somebody at that level. Think about how many people wants to deal with him. Period. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And, and they may even be more valuable than you, but like by, by you saying, "Yo, look, I'm willing to sow it, sow my seed." Um, like do what I need to do for whatever I need to do to show to prove my worth, and there's still no guarantee on the other end. 
That's right. You know what I'm well, saying? See, and see, that's what gymnastics taught me, though. Yeah. Because when I was cut from the team four times in five years, every single year I kept coming back and I mm. kept trying out. Mm. I kept trying out for They're the like, team. like, here you go again. And I never got my reward for it. I never ended up making the team. Mm. But I outworked other people who were on the team, mm. who were on scholarship, who knew that they were going to be there. And what that taught me was that I can go, I can put myself through hell for five years straight, outwork everybody who's got a cushy little scholarship, and I don't need a reward for it, which means I don't need to carry it to Chase. Got it. So how are you gonna compete with me? Yeah. If you need, you need a check. Yeah. 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 You need a company car. Yeah. You need the vacation. Yeah. You need all these things just to feel motivated to work at yeah. your fullest potential. I don't. Yeah. Need, I don't need anything to you change. You don't need none of that. Nothing. I'm telling y'all, but I, I wouldn't want to be in the same. I wouldn't want to race against you, bro. <laughs> For real. I, that, that right. That right. There just gut check me. You know what I'm saying? Because dude, I'm just being honest, like bro, like we all want that payoff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you was willing to go there and get cut and feel that burn, that 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 yo. B, thanks for coming out again. This is year four, same yep. result. You know what yep. I mean? Like, bro, that's gotta be tough. But like, bro, but you trained your brain yep. to understand like, man, it don't matter. Like I'm, I'm doing this for me and whatever. If I make the team cool, if I don't cool, if you don't make the team, yep. you, you daggone ready to end it all almost. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because you right. everything rise on you make it. But, but bro, that's that's a crazy mentality. Talk about that mentality, man. Like that's, that's, that's nuts. Like hard work never disappears. <sighs> That's all it is. Hard work never disappears because the thing is, so there's nothing wrong with wanting the payoff. Right, right. right? right. Wanting the payoff is completely normal and natural. We were just having a conversation about cars earlier. I said, yeah. but be, having nice cars is one of the reasons I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like I want to make money so that I can afford the. I'm super passionate about. Yeah, it. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with wanting the payoff, but what you have to have more faith in is that the process will produce a result internally that is greater than what it could ever possibly produce externally. Wow. Meaning, yes, if you put in the required effort and sacrifice, then maybe you'll get a nice car, big house, nice mm -hmm. vacations, whatever else that you want. But who you will become is infinitely more valuable than that. Yeah. Because when you become the right person, you can go create whatever you want because Man. you've become the person who is capable of doing so. That's hard. And so if you have enough faith in that, you should never need to a carrot to chase. Because I knew that throughout that process of getting cut from the team over and over and over again, I was becoming somebody that when I one day had a chance opportunity with Eric Thomas, I would funnel that energy and that dedication, that commitment that I had learned and yeah. the personal characteristics I had learned about myself, I could funnel that into a different opportunity and be 10 times as effective as somebody who had never gone through that inner work. Yeah, so what does it feel, what does it feel like, right? Because as you're saying this, I know people are watching this right now and they're like, yo, how can I tap in to what Brandon Byrne has tapped into? There's three steps, so, so here's the thing. People talk about work ethic all the time, mm -hmm. right? Work ethic is really just what we have come to name the aggregate of two different skill sets. Mm -hmm. One of those is discipline mm -hmm. and one of those is passion. Mm -hmm. If you're passionate about something, you don't even have to be disciplined. You're just gonna do it anyway. Right. If you're passionate about working out, nobody has to tell you to work out. Mm -hmm. You just do it because you enjoy doing it, Yeah. right? So you've gotta have some kind of alignment between what you're doing and what you enjoy doing, Yeah. right? You gotta have some passion there. Discipline, if you're disciplined, even if you're not passionate about it, you're gonna put in the work anyway, mm -hmm. right? So if you're disciplined, then, and, and you're passionate, you're always going to be putting in the work. The third thing is just faith. Yeah. I have so much faith, and it doesn't have to be, I choose to believe in, in a higher power, it doesn't have to be that way, but you have to have faith that who you're becoming is greater than what you're getting. Yeah. If you don't have faith in that process, like if you don't believe in personal development, it's gonna be really difficult to push yourself through those times if personal development is all that you're getting. Yeah, yeah, dang. My man just gave y'all three steps on how to freaking do it. I think one of the things you said, is the, the common ground that I have with you, uh, Brandon, is that I also grew up in in a home that was 600 square feet. Like You got me beat. Man, nah, yeah, I got you beat. Not, not like I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? But, like, but I grew up not knowing who my father was and all that type of stuff, man. and and. And cats like us that that come up, from, you know, because we I'm from Arkansas, you're from Alabama, and you know when you're in the South and you're poor, poor is poor, right? Like, but but when you're in the South and you're poor, I just think it hits different. It's different. It's a different type <laughs> of poor because I've been to a lot of major cities and yeah. poor is poor. But man, when you're in the South and you're poor, something you said, bro, um, like I didn't even know I was poor until somebody told me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's that true. was that was me, bro, and like I, I feel you on that, man. And I think like. For me, like that, that, as I grew up, like I'll never forget, man, like uh, I used to think I could fly. Mm. Like I used to have this little blanket. You know when you was a kid, like you had that little blanket yep. and then you just took that little blanket everywhere you went. 
Yeah. Man, I remember one day, man, I used, to, I used to tie that thing around my neck, bro, like a cape, like a <laughs> Superman cape, man. And, and bro, you couldn't tell me I couldn't fly until one day I literally took off running and I <laughs> went like that down some stairs and just tore myself up. And I just remember my mama said, I told you you couldn't fly and this and that. And, and, and I remember, bro, like in that moment, like it kind of jacked me up because I realized, bro, like, yo, like I'm not who I think I was or I can't do what I think I can do and, and I allow like a, like limitations. Now, don't get me wrong, my mama was right. Like I couldn't fly. <laughs> but I just remember like my brain went from like this limitless thought process. I could do anything, be anything, whatever. You know what I'm saying? To like, man, maybe, man, I gotta survive. Like I can yeah. jump it down those stairs like they're like no dummy up. And then like I said, kind of like my boy, my, I, remember, I never forget my boy Wheezy. That's what we call him Wheezy, named Chris. We call him Wheezy, because he always Wheezy, he had asthma. And uh, <laughs> shout out to Wheezy if you watching. Um, Wheezy, I remember one day Wheezy came to my house, man. He was like, bro, you ain't, you ain't got no TV? You ain't got no Nintendo? Man, this house sucks. Yeah. Like, he was like, he was like All that out bro, is, bro, bro, you poor. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man. yo, like, and I just remember, bro, like, just as a kid, man, just like, like at one point feeling like I could do anything, be anything to like, now it's like, man, I'm poor. Like, this, this is who but, I am. Like, so, so let me ask you this though. What yeah. did that do to you? Cause I had the same experience where I went over to a friend's house one time, my best friend when I was in second grade and I'll go over to his house all the time. Mm -hmm. And then he knew or his parents knew where we were from. Yeah. And his parents said, he's not allowed to go over to my house because of the neighborhood that we live <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now for me, it was that same situation yeah. where I'm like, I'm still a kid, yeah. but it was like light bulb moment. Yeah. Oh wait, maybe the situation isn't normal. So what did that do to you? Was it discouraging? Did it motivate you to get out of it? Like how'd that affect you? Man, I think as a kid, it discouraged me. But then once I grew up, cause see, I grew up, like I never knew who my father was, right? My mom, she got, she was a cocaine dealer. Like my mom ran cocaine from uh, Miami to Arkansas with, with wow. the Cubans. Like in the 80s, it was real big. A, the, 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 the cocaine movement was huge, but she ended up getting caught and I got put in foster care. And then my grandmother came, got me, and we were still like, like super poor, bro. But like, I just remember like, just because my mom, bro, like in a, in a short amount of time, she always had a lot of money. Mm. But, but we was what we call hood rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we couldn't like go buy the cars, the houses, yeah. because they're going to look, they're going to ask, but where are you getting all this money at? Like you from? ain't even got no job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so like, I remember like just in that one little moment, my mom, it was a moment, bro, a defining moment in my life to where a, a light bulb came on in my head. And this is going to sound crazy to you probably, but I remember I said, you remember, you know, them little swimming pools you can buy at Walmart, like yeah. one foot, they're like $10, like yep. made of plastic. I remember we were walking at the Walmart. And I said, mama, can we buy, can we afford one of them pools? And my mama was just like, like a boss, like a, like some kind of mob person. She said, baby, we'll buy all them damn pools. And she just pulled out this big wad of money. You know what I'm saying? And I just remembered in that moment, I was like, I just gotta get the money. Mm. I just gotta get the money. I ain't gotta live like this. I just gotta get the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, but then, but, but I realized how she was getting money was not the way I wanted to get money though. Mm. Because the way she was getting money had, 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 huge, huge, like, <laughs> things riding on, like, her yeah. freedom, her yeah. life, you know what I'm saying? She could die. Like, the consequences of that was nuts. And so, bro, I ended up, like, realizing at an early age, it's like, yo, like, this stuff is possible, mm -hmm. but, like, I can't do it the same way they're doing it, like my uncles is doing it, like my brothers is doing it, like my, my, my mama was doing it, like yeah. my stepdad was doing it. And so, bro, like, I realized, I started, I was always, like, a thinker, bro. Like, I would see the type of people they hung around. I'm like, yo, I can't hang around the type of people. You know okay. what I'm saying? Break that down for yeah, you, yeah. because a lot of people don't have that level of self-awareness. Yeah. Or even awareness of their surroundings. Like yeah. they just think just because I grew up around these people or these are the people that I find myself surrounded mm. with, that that is who I'm going to make it to the top with. So how do you, from that age, get that kind yeah. of awareness? Man, I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, and, and, and not to go super spiritual on you, bro, but like, bro, I, I found God at an early age, man. And I realized like, for the wages of sin is death. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my grandma used to always tell me like, look, if you go this road, two things gonna happen for you. It's a cliche. Every every party tell you either you're gonna die or you're gonna be in prison. Yep. And I looked at my grandma, I mean my mother, my my uh my stepdad, all my uncles, they was either dead or in prison. You know so what I'm saying? Proof. And yeah, 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 yeah. Like I had like this ain't no movie. Like my yeah. life was literally the movie. Like, and so I just realized that, yo, like if I'm gonna 
be successful, if I want to be who I want to be, and back then, to be honest with you, bro, like, I wanted to, like, fly a plane. I don't know why I wanted to be a pilot, bro. Couldn't tell you why. But I said, yo, I got to get around people and be around people that don't have this on their mind where they want to make fast money selling dope. They don't want to do X, because we have people we call boosters. They go, you tell them like, man, I remember every year, bro, I got my my, my, uh, my um, school my school clothes because we would go to a booster, be like, hey, this is what I want, blah, blah, blah. They'd be like, all right, so if you at the store, that's 300, they would steal it. Like my mom would pay them and pay half price. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just like, for me, I just realized like, I don't want to go, I don't want to be none of this. So I started hanging around people that didn't sell dope that didn't um, boost, you know, we called it boost. We didn't. Yeah, so so she would pay, so it would cost 300. Yeah. If you went and bought it in the store. Yeah. She would pay somebody 150 just to go steal it. Yeah, have I've price. never heard of that. I, we call them boosters. How have I never heard of this? <laughs> Listen, man, it's Arkansas. They have <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, man, is that like, I just saw like the type of, the, like, I just remember my mom always being paranoid. Mm. Always looking through the blinds and just the life that she lived. And I just, and I just remember, man, like, like God has more for me than this. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, my grandmother told me as a as a very small kid, like Mike, like God has a calling on your life. Like you're gonna reach the world mm -hmm. with with your voice and, and the message that He's given you. And and she used to always tell me like, look, just because you live in this, this is not your this is not your ending spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like and and she was just like, God is gonna use all. That. I know you don't understand it. I don't understand it as your grandmother, but just understand that God is gonna use this to elevate you and not kill you with it. And you're gonna have a message for the world. And so, man, like she would always just send me to church. She'd put me on the church bus. You know what I mean? She would just put, I, I, I didn't even like going at first, but then I started meeting friends. And, and so bro, I just changed my whole circle, bro. And I think, uh, what you call it? I think he has a quote. I, I wanna say it's Russell Simmons, where he said, look, if you the, the best person in your circle, like you need to find a new circle. So bro, I started like getting rid of friends. You know, and I, at an early age, like I, I recognized all this type of stuff. And not to say I didn't have friends that were knuckleheads and, and doing stuff on the side, because by default, where you live at, you, it's just around yeah. you. But I chose not to be around them. And and, and that distance myself from them as much as possible, man. And I just always knew that God had a calling on my life to do greater. And that where I was at, that wasn't that wasn't a, a period for me. That was a comma. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that, that's really how all that came about, bro, to be honest with you. Where's the faith come from, though? Like if somebody's listening to this and it's like, okay, that sounds great. I can see how that type of faith and that mm -hmm. level of faith is gonna pull me through some of these situations, yeah. you know, keep me moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have that right now, yeah. either the faith in myself or the faith in something higher than yeah. that, where, where do you get it? Man, I, I'll be honest with you, bro. Like I, I really truly believe that my faith, like the faith, cause I, I felt God's presence in my life, like at a very young age, bro. Man, like when he touched my heart, like when he, when he actually like touched my life, like, like all this other stuff going on around me, like he, he, he was the peace in the storm. You know what I'm saying? And so like for me, like it's hard to explain, like to give you this like that answer, but I always knew like, man, like I'm protected. There's people shooting all around here. There's like Crips. I grew up in a Crip neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like I, I like God, he, he kept me from that. You know what I mean? And like, and, and so for me, like, I always felt his presence in my life, always. Like everywhere I went, like he, the Bible says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. You know what I'm saying? And, and I always felt his presence with me and I always felt him um, convicting me not to do certain things. And, and so I was led by the spirit. So I would say, man, like whenever you come into a real contact, a real um, just encounter with God, bro, like you can't help but know that there's something greater than you. And you can't help but like, yo, like God, like I give you me, like I, I give you me. And then God started showing me, me. You know what I'm saying? He started revealing to me like, yo, like I've created you to do this. I set you apart to do this. Mm -hmm. And then he, you start seeing him opening doors and you start seeing him like things that, that normally don't even make sense as somebody that grows up in a situation like me, you grow up in, like we're, we're starting to get put in certain positions and certain getting favor with certain people. And bro, when people look at my story and I'm sure when they look at your story, they can't help but say, yo man, it's something going on. It's gotta be a God. It, 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 it gets to a point where it makes less sense for there to not be a God. Right. Than it would for there to be. Absolutely. And, and don't get me wrong, like, bro, like, we still have to put faith into action, right? Yeah. Like, we can every day choose to do God's will for our life or choose to do what we want to do. And so, bro, I still believe that God gives us that that free will, that, that, that choice, right? So and so, bro, like, I choose every day to live the life that he's called me to live. So. You know what I mean? Like, and so by doing that, bro, I reap the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. 
Like whenever I'm doing what God has called me to do and I'm living the full purpose that he's called me to live, bro, I can't help but win. Do you remember <laughs> the uh, the prayer that I told you to bro, pray yes, a couple man. of days ago? Because yes. you said that God started showing you who man. you really were. Man, man, man. That was, that. Man, go ahead, tell him the prayer, bro. I, I ain't even gonna be able to say it, bro, because like, like I actually, if I pulled up my phone, I think I even saved it on my phone. Yeah. I'm just gonna say, y'all, so me, like I say, y'all, Brandon's my coach, y'all. And Brandon told me one night, we was talking a couple of weeks ago, and Brandon said, I want you to pray and ask God to show you the way that he sees you. Yep. It, was, it was a long term, was that right? That's it. You know what I'm saying? And like, bro, that was so deep and that's so profound because at the end of the day, a lot of times that when we ask God things, we go in with our own sunglasses on and our own preconceived answer of what we want God to say. Mm -hmm. That bro, if we would just sit there in the stillness of God, and if we would just sit there and meditate and ask God, look, yo, like God, clear my mind, give me a blank canvas right now. And I want you to show me the way that you see me, bro, it would rock our worlds yeah. to see us how God sees us. Because bro, the way we see ourselves and the way that God sees ourselves and the way that people see us is three different things. That's right. But the crazy part is, bro, the only one that matters is the way that God sees us because he's the ultimate creator who created us yeah. and gave us the talents and gave us the gifts that he that he's blessed us with, bro. And so it's yeah, bro, that, that kind of, that messed me up, bro. I woke up the next day, like at four o'clock in the morning. Cause you know, this is what's crazy. When you sent me that, yeah. when you sent me that, cause he, I'm gonna tell y'all, Brandon don't text. He sends you voicemails. <laughs> he sends you voice text messages. That's true. And sometimes them jokes be like five minutes long. Brandon, Brandon it's on brand. Then, nah, nah. But I love it though, because I, I, because bro, I honor them. Like I'm grateful for them. So I knew, I said, yo, I'm not even gonna listen to this till in the morning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the yeah. dopest thing was that, that morning when I woke up and after I prayed, um, I, I, I took a shot of water, <laughs> drank, got me some coffee in my system. Yeah. Bro, I sat there and I just played that and I was just sitting there bro, in, in, in the darkness, the stillness, while everybody's still asleep, it's still dark outside, I got my little light on. I'm just sitting there and listening to your voice say that to me. I'm just like, yo, like, Lord, like show me the way that you, that you see me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, and bro, like whenever God starts to show you the things and, and show you the way that he sees you, bro, he even starts to expose things in your life that you don't even need there, bro, that you mm -hmm. thought that you needed. Yeah. And you realize like, man, I don't, I don't even need this. Like God is showing me, like I'm relying on that. I need to be relying yeah. on him. Cause you're so much greater than that, that you don't need it, but you don't see it, he does. Yes, yes. And so bro, I, I thank you for that, bro. Cause that right there, that jacked me up, man. I ain't gonna lie, in a good way, like not a <laughs> right, bad way, right, man. Right. I remember, my mom gave me this advice one time because I didn't used to be, I'm incredibly spiritual now, right? Yeah. Huge believer. Now, when you say spiritual, what does that mean? Because I mean, again, not trying to put your yeah, beliefs, because yeah. some people, spiritual might be anything, bro. So like, what does that mean? If you don't, just for the listener. I believe in God. I believe in the Christian God. I don't necessarily subscribe to the institution of church and everything else that goes along with okay, it. Okay, right? okay, cool. Um, but, but personal connection with God, mm -hmm. like that's the most important thing for me, yeah. right? Uh, but I didn't used to be that way. I used to be super skeptical, right? Yeah. I was that guy that's like, well, science says this, and Got I don't it. know if this makes sense. Logically, right, even though I grew up going to church, my yeah. parents made me go to church when I was a kid, but I just was always having that skeptical mind. One time, my mom, like I said, she had a lot of health challenges, especially mm -hmm. when I was growing up, and she found herself in the hospital. And this is right when, I think I was a freshman at Michigan. Mm -hmm. So remember, she's in Huntsville, Alabama, 12 hour car ride okay. away, and I'm in University of Michigan. And I was, that night, I was at the grocery store. Um, I don't know why, I was distracting myself, you know, by going to the grocery store, because I didn't want to think about it. But I knew that she was in pretty rough shape at the hospital back at home. And my parents assured me, you know, don't come home, don't come home. But I was terrified because my mother is yeah. like that person. That's everything, man. Mama's mama. Everything. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was walking through the aisles of the store and I locked eyes with this woman I've never met in my life. Mm -hmm. Middle-aged African-American woman, never seen her in my life. Didn't ring a bell of anybody that I would recognize or anything like that. And we locked eyes for 0. 0.2 seconds. And the level of peace that came over me is not, you can't articulate that. Right. And I texted my mom, she still had access to her phone, so I texted her. She had just gotten done with a couple procedures or anything. I texted her, I said, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. I said, God just told me you're gonna be okay. Mm. I told her what happened. And she said, never forget that moment because you never know when God's gonna use you the way that she used her that night. Mm. And it made Ooh. me reconsider the way that I interact with people. Yeah. Just the way that I carry myself. Cause you never know who's gonna see God in your eyes mm. 
just for half a second Man. and what that might do for their life, for their peace in that time of trial and tribulation. You just mm -hmm. don't know. And, and that's so deep, bro, because if you think about it, man, the Bible talks about how we are God's highest form of creation mm -hmm. and that we were made in his image. And sometimes, bro, like, not that we're God, big G, but we're little G yeah. in yeah. that moment to people. And, and you just don't know what, how God will use you. Because like, that's crazy, bro. Like you said, the lady didn't say nothing too. She just looked at you. Yeah. And the peace that was in her life, I, I call that the Holy Spirit. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like the Holy Spirit that was in her life. And that's cool, man. That's what's crazy. That lady will never know this. She don't even know the impact no. she made on your life. And now that impact hits you. And now the, the lesson that your mom taught you through that, now how many people you're going to impact. Man, bro, that's crazy. Yeah. Like that's just, just randomly in a grocery store, bro. <laughs> like that's, but that's the thing, bro. Like, like we, we are the hands and feet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of, of, of God, man. And, and that's just, oof. And that's why I told you to pray that prayer because as soon as you see your own gifts and talents the way that God sees the gifts mm -hmm. and talents that he gave you, yeah. you begin to feel obligated to do something yeah. with them. When you begin man. to believe that you are sent here with an obligation, with a responsibility, man. that you have to execute with excellence because that's your bro. purpose here, yes. you start to treat life a little bit different. No, and you're right, bro, because I'm going to tell you, man, like for the people that want to know what gifts or what are we talking about? These these gifts that we're talking about. I, I can tell you how to identify your gifts and what what keeps you up at night. Mm, yeah, what what is the thing one. that even even if you tried to be like, yo, I'm done, I'm quit, put it, it, yeah. it won't let you do it if you even if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it won't because bro, I've been there before, man. Like and and the reason why is because God before you was even in your mother's womb, the Bible talks about that. He had a plan for you and it was a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. And those talents that he's given you are the things that's going to elevate you. And the reason why you can't rest is because he's not done with you. And he gave you those things for you to do a certain work with him. That's right. And it's cool, man, just to see like you doing that work, man. And, and whether it be through gymnastics, whether it be you, um, I saw you on the Big Ten Network one time. I saw you just, bro, just living like bro just you being in the room with people like bro like that that you probably coming from alabama you probably would have never ever thought like dude growing up in a 900 square foot house doing the things that you're doing and then all you all you was was just willing bro like that's what i tell people all the time is god never asked you to be god yeah god asked you to show up that's it everything you find to do do with all your might mm. right yeah that's, that's all he asks of you if you just show up with the opportunities that he puts in front of you and you execute to the fullest of your ability, mm -hmm. you're never gonna have a problem. That's all I did. Yeah, I didn't have a plan. It's so funny when people hear the story about how I got linked up with ET, mm -hmm. ended up becoming his booking agent, ended mm -hmm. up doing so much work with him, partnering with him. I mean, people assume that I plotted this thing out. Right. Like, oh, okay, so you knew you wanted to get into the personal development speaking and coaching industry when you were in college, and then you placed yourself around ET, and then you did this whole situation to work for him for free, and then you got the job, and they did. No, I'm not that smart. Right, right. You think I figured all this out three right. years in advance? Right. All I did was certain opportunities were put in front of me, and I just, I, I was able to have a clear enough heart. Yeah. It's not clear enough sight. It's right. clear enough heart to identify what's a real opportunity versus what's a, a, well, bro, a, a distraction, and then execute on it. That's it. Well, it makes sense, though, bro, because, again, since, since we just keeping this biblical, our steps are ordered, too, though. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and bro, the thing is, I would even make the argument, even if you did plan it out, bro, that's still dope. Cause listen, the Bible talks about that faith without works is dead anyway. Yeah. So you would still want to put in the work because of God, because that's what moves God. Yeah. yeah. Is, is our faith and us putting it in the work. Not just us saying, God, hook it up. I, I believe in you. We just sitting here like, no, like, bro, like, I believe that I have faith, y'all, that I'm gonna look like Brandon one day. <laughs> but I can sit there all day and just talk about it, or I can go out there and pick up some weights, or I can instead of eating fried chicken, eat me a grilled chicken sandwich. Or you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, bro. There's certain things you can have the thought, you can have the vision, but bro, you've got to have the work, you've got to have the action plan yeah. to, to to see it through, bro. It's like faith moves mountains the same way that bicycle moves mountains. You can't have faith and then the mountain just picks up all of a sudden by an act of God and it moves. But if you get on a bicycle and you start pedaling, that mountain moves because you go right on over. Man, this guy crazy. Simple as that. This guy crazy, bro. Man, okay, let me ask you something though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right. I, I, <laughs> let, we you keep to, asking me. We gotta, we gotta throw the ball back in your court. Okay, 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 your okay, right. So I wanna know, yeah. like you, you talked a little bit about how you grew up, yeah. right? And what that situation was mm -hmm. like. How do you go from, I mean, there's obviously some time between 
that situation and where you are now. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Because I mean, I know, like, just from a story standpoint, mm -hmm. you said that you know your family was dealing drugs and all this, yeah. this, this gang environment, everything else. How do you go from that to being in the position that you're in today? Man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm not saying this to get some cool points with my wife. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not. But bro, I'm telling you, whenever I married and I met my wife, we've been married now for almost 17 years, been together almost 18. Bro, I elevated really? because of her, a thousand, a thousand percent. Because bro, like, like when when you have somebody that believes in you, when you don't believe in yourself, when you have somebody that that speaks into your life, when you can't even speak to yourself, when you got somebody that 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 speaks to those um those things inside of you that you don't even see no more, and and they can pull that out, just grow those things in you, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. Like it ain't just me, bro. Like like I ain't even gonna sit there and try to play you like that. Like yeah, bro, I was just so dope and and this and that. But I always knew, bro, that that this right here that. I, and I say this a lot to Heather, which is my wife and my son, Isaac. I always say, look, like, I want people that when they look at our family tree, like when I say people, like family that comes generations after us, mm -hmm. right? Like, yo, like my family tree before uh, great, 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 great grandpa, uh, Mike and, and great, great, great grandma, Heather, mm -hmm. it was jacked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, bro, like from their own, yeah. Man, like they just, man, our whole family changed. Our whole lineage changed because, you know what I'm saying? Like the Bible talks about that, that a wise man uh, leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and, and what I'm trying to do, bro, is, is change my whole family. Like, bro, I, I get the funniest thing. I took my son back to the house that I grew up in. And this is the first thing he said, bro. And it blew my mind when we pulled in that neighborhood. He said, dad, is this, is this, is this place abandoned? Like, is this, does people live here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in that moment, bro, I'll be honest with you. Like, I was like, yo, man, what you talking about where I'm from, boy? You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, yo, like, this is dope. Like, my son would never know what it's like to live here. Mm. Would never know what it's like to grow up like this. It's totally foreign to him. Bro, totally foreign. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, and I'm like, yo, like, I can, you know, be like, yo, man, you ain't got, you don't know nothing about this. And that's cool he don't know nothing about that. Mm. You right. know what I'm saying? That's not a badge of honor for my son to have to grow through right. what I went through. Like, it's a badge of honor for me to say, like, look, I changed everybody mm -hmm. after me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So for me, bro, it, it's just, it's bigger. So I, my, my why and my reason is because, bro, like, I want to change my family's lineage after me mm -hmm. to where when they think about poverty, it's just something they see on TV. When they think about, like, um, living a certain way, that's a movie act. Like, to where it's almost yeah. like that's not even real because... Yo, like we we have set up this structure, we have set up all of this stuff for our family to grow spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Like it's where she's like, it's almost don't even seem real. And so my wife, bro, I go to go back to her, she always knew like I wasn't meant to like, and again, not to hate on nobody that works a job, right? But I've always known I was an entrepreneur. Always. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I still understood until I get there, I have to have a job. Right, right, right. <laughs> so anybody right now has got a job and you call the entrepreneurship, just trust me, just keep working your job. Don't quit yeah. your job until you know to quit your job. Like I'm not telling you quit your job, I'm telling you keep your job. But <laughs> but what I'm saying is that like that, but again, she knew like, yo, like if you're gonna do something, this is where I always see you passionate about. Like go over here, like see what that's about. And she would, God would use her. You know what right. I'm saying? To, to, so that gap that you're talking about, bro, I'm telling you, that's my wife. That gap is like, you can just put Heather's face right here. <laughs> Boom, and that was the bridge between here to where I'm at right now is Heather. And, I, and, and a lot of people call, they said they got the Holy Ghost, I got the Heather Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, I always hear her voice right here, right here. Don't do it, I'm gonna kill you. Like, <laughs> but no, man, so I have to give her credit, bro, because I have to give her flowers while she can still smell them. Yeah. You know, obviously it's God. I, I, I can go to cliche God, but I'm telling you, man, God will put people in your life, bro, to help you get to where you're going because you can't do it all by yourself anyway. And that's the problem. People feel like they can do it all by themselves and you just can't. Yeah, yeah. You know? How do you recognize those people? How do you know she was the one? Woo, this is a, this is a crazy story, man. <laughs> but the first time, well, not the first time I met her, but the first time she ever let me take her out on a date and pick her up. I don't know, I can't explain it to you. I just remember opening the door and when she opened the door, I mean, excuse me, I knocked on the door when she opened the door, she had these, the, the, she got this bouncy, beautiful, curly hair. She kind of just shook it like that. And she had these glasses. She just looked at me. I said, that's going to be my wife. 
that's gonna wow. be my life. Nothing deep. I didn't look at her. It was just like, I just knew. Now she didn't know. Right. But I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I went after her. Like, you know, I I, I went after her until finally she 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 actually didn't she didn't like me that much, to be honest <laughs> with you. She, you know, she uh I called her too much. You know, and I was right. texting her, bro, back in the day when you had to hit the two button three times to hit to get the C letter. <laughs> so bro, I'm talking, I'm texting, I'm hitting the hit had to hit every button like 30 times just to say hi. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I went through it for her. But no, um, I quit I quit talking to her because I felt like I kind of felt it. And then she um the one thing, man, you know, back in the day we call, you know, when you when when you chasing a chick and then whenever she you kind of feel that cold shoulder, what you do, you just go, you just go mute. You just you just so I cut it off. You know, and, and I I'd love to hear her side of this part of the story. <laughs> but but out of nowhere, you know, because I want to make a mind wonder. Yeah. That's what we say, you gotta make a mind wonder. Yeah, yeah. And so I got a mind wonder, and I know what she called me when she's like, hey, I really miss you calling me. I really miss this, this, that, and this and that. You know, let's go out to eat. And so, got her, got her. And I knew right then, I said, girl, you ain't, because I used to drive from Asheville, North Carolina to Charlotte, okay. which is about a three hour drive away, bro. I would go there three or four days a week, six hours round trip, one day, bro, boom, boom. Bro, I was in Man. love, bro. But I knew, but the thing is, bro, when you know you want something, yeah. And you know that it's just, bro, because I've been with other chicks, man, and like never, never did one make me feel like her. Never did I feel connected to one like I felt like I connected with her. And it was not just because I thought she was fine. It was me looking at her shape or it was me, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like a connection that I never felt with nobody else, bro. And I knew that she was the missing component of my life. And and, and, and I could only go so far without her. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so like, I, I knew I had to have her. And I mean, she's she's the GOAT, bro. Like she's killing the game. I'm about to have you meet her one day. I, <laughs> I told David that. I said, that first time I ever met David, yeah, I'm sorry y'all, David behind the camera. I said, bro, I gotta let you meet my wife. There's something there that you gotta meet her. And bro, yeah. now, you know what I mean? Like she just wanted people, bro. Like she just, once you meet her, like you'll never forget her. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm, I'm blessed, bro. So I hear you talking about a lot of different things, right? You were talking about work ethic. You talked about surrounding yourself with the right people. Uh, with your wife, you talked about faith a lot. Mm -hmm. If you had to summarize, like, give me the 30 second elevator pitch. If I'm in your position 20, 30 years ago, right? I got nothing right now, mm -hmm. but I wanna be who you are today. I wanna get in the same rooms that you're in today. Mm -hmm. I wanna have the same exposure that you have today. I wanna have some of the same success that you have today. What's that 30 second formula that somebody can just take from this, go apply and get started? Yeah, man, that's good. I, I, first thing I would say is that you're able, you're, you're good enough. Whatever it is that you want to do, like you can do it. Um, the biggest thing is that for me, and I'll say this to anybody, just trust God. Yeah. Just trust that God has a plan for you and it's to prosper you, not to harm you. Um, and tangibly, like get around people that are doing things that you, that you want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I did. I got around people that did what I was doing. I got around, when I was doing music, I got around people that was doing music at a high level. When I got into barber business, the business of barbering, I got around people that were multimillionaires with several shops, with several schools. Yeah. And I got around, I got in those circles. And so, man, the biggest thing is just, just trust in yourself, trust your calling, trust your abilities, and just know it's gonna take work. Yeah. Like it's it's not it's not just gonna fall in your lap. It's it's gonna take work. It. <laughs> but 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 I promise you, like I think ET said this, um, and if, if ET didn't say it, you'll know who probably said it. But everything that you want is on the other side of hard. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like nothing is gonna be easy. Nothing that you want that's gonna sustain you, that's gonna help elevate you to where you want to go in life is not it's not easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my whole life I fought. Your whole life you fought. And if you're watching this, I know you fought your whole life. Yeah. But keep fighting. I'm gonna put it back on you. <laughs> no, I know, right? Because yeah, I mean, I'm gonna put it back on you. Like, what would you say? What would be your elevator pitch to somebody that that's just? Yeah, no, it goes back to those three things that we talked about earlier. So you've got to have discipline, right? Yeah. And I think the way that you develop discipline is doing something challenging every single day. Yeah. I don't care what that is. If it's a workout, if it's a cold shower, if, mm -hmm. it, if it's a conversation that you don't want to have, mm -hmm. you've got to do something difficult and challenging every single day so that you develop the discipline muscle. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, that'll ensure that even if you don't feel like it, you're still putting in the work. Yeah. So from there we go passion. Yeah. If you don't know what your purpose is, what your gift is, what your passion is yet, you need to put some serious time into finding it. Like yeah. that's priority number one. Until you understand who you are and why you're here, you are a wandering generality wasting time. You have got to figure out what you're passionate about, what you are gifted at. And the way that you can do that 
is ask other people around you. Yeah. Ask your friends and family, hey, what do I not shut up about? Yeah. Like you, I think you mentioned that earlier. What yeah. do I always talk about? Yeah. What, what do I talk about so much that it gets annoying? I yeah. just can't put it to bed. It keeps me up at night, mm -hmm. right? You gotta understand that. And then last but not least is faith, yeah. right? If you don't talk to God every day, you're lost, you're flying blind yeah. because your spirit determines what your eyes see. Yeah. Your eyes don't determine what your spirit feels. That's right. It's backwards. If people got to mess up, they say, well, I'm in this environment. I see gangs, I see drugs, all this yeah. other stuff you're talking about. Your eyes don't determine what happens in your spirit. Right. But your spirit determines what do your eyes see? Do they see an opportunity for growth? Mm -hmm. Or do they see hopelessness, yeah. right? So you've got to have that relationship with God. And then I'm going to say this, you wrap all those three things up in environment. Yeah. Because even if you're disciplined, passionate, and you have faith, and you're in a terrible environment, and you don't do anything to expose yourself to anything better, and your mind is closed off from the possibility of something better, and you don't have connections and people around you who are showing you how to get somewhere better, it's going to be really, really difficult to do it all, all on your own. So discipline, passion, faith, wrapped up in a casing of environment. That's what I would say. Real quick, where can people find you before we stop? Man, <laughs> yes. Man, look, you can find me on Instagram at Coach Mike Shelton, TikTok at Coach Mike Shelton. Hit me up at CoachShelton.com. What can they find Coach you, Shelton. man? I love it. I love it. I am B Burns, right? I am B Burns on all social media and I am B Burns dot. Now, when you say B, B as in boy. B, yep. B as in boy, not D. So I am B Burns. Y'all follow him, man. He's cold. Y'all see how, y'all, I ain't even got to explain. Y'all see how cold he was, man. That's crazy, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother.